Malaysia, the Zong Emperor of the Tang Dynasty, is preparing to receive a group of envoys from remote vassal states at Linda Hall. It was 793 AD, 175 years after the founding of the Tang Dynasty. When Li Shi ascended the throne, the once powerful empire had begun to decline in spite of its seeming prosperity. As the 12th emperor of the dynasty, Li Shi is concerned about the future of the empire. But today is different. One of the envoys are from a vassal state ruled by women. But what sort of kingdom is it? The Dezong Emperor is curious to find out. After 1,200 years, today's people, born of the same curiosity, are looking for traces of evidence in the hopes of rediscovering this mysterious kingdom of women. Shanghai Jing, or literally classic of mountains and seas, China's oldest book of geography depicts many bizarre places. In its first chapter, classic of regions beyond the seas, south, there is an account of two women living in a place surrounded by a moat. This might be an early reference to the kingdom of women. Due to the mystical nature of the book, the kingdom of women it depicts is no more than an illusory place. Is such a kingdom a legend, or did it actually exist? Intrigued by the mystery of the kingdom, many of today's experts and scholars begin to look into its obscure history. Lishan 伊斯坦 Women Kingdom can be found in many historical records of the Sui and Tang dynasties. What kind of kingdom is it, and does it have anything to do with the kingdom of women? elected queen is a common description in historical documents about the Eastern Women Kingdom. So it means that the queendom was ruled by women and that the women there were superior to men. One is reminded of one of the most celebrated women in history, Wu Zetian, the only empress throughout China's feudal dynasties. With extraordinary beauty and wisdom, Wu, in 690 AD, took the helm of the Tang regime, the most powerful empire of the time. However, over the 15 years of her reign, the entire Tang bureaucracy was still dominated by men. Then, what was it like in this Eastern Women Kingdom, where women ruled supreme?
他一个最基础的特点就是女人掌权，这个地方所有的官呢、啊，所有的这个管理，所有的权利者，呃，都是女人，啊，这个，它是一个母系社会的遗留下来的一种文化习俗。The once illusory kingdom is now starting to seem as if it existed after all. Records can be found in the old book of tongue about its geographic location, customs, architectural features, as well as its relations with the Tang regime. But are such descriptions reliable? The Old Book of the Tang covers the 289-year history of China under the Tang Dynasty. Shi Jing Tang, the notorious puppet ruler of the later Jin Dynasty, was the force behind the compiling of the book. This was one of the few achievements in his much despised political life. Sanctioned history compiled shortly after the demise of the Tang Dynasty. The facts in it are seen as reliable and of historical value. Through it, we can infer that the kingdom of women it depicts did exist in history, and that the kingdom enjoyed close relations with the Tang regime. We look at the Tang Dynasty records, we know. 东域国的国王是曾经是多次，在唐代的时候，在武德就是个唐高祖武德年间就开始进进行朝贡，就进行跟中央王朝联系。Where was the kingdom of women during the Tang Dynasty? According to records found in the Old Book of Tang, people speculate that it was located at the east of the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau. And that its sphere of influence covered an area of several counties in Sichuan Province. The Dong Yu Guo's position should be in the Dada Du and Sang Yu region, and should be in the Jiazhong region, the Jiazhong region, which has a great alliance. Mount Mao Duo. Is one of the four sacred mountains in Tibetan inhabited areas. Its highest peak is located in the upper reaches of the Dadu River. The Tibetans living in its vicinity are called Gyarong Tibetans. They are mainly found in Gansu and Aiba, autonomous prefectures of Sichuan Province. The area is assumed to a large extent coincide with the territory of the Kingdom of Women. Can we find some traces of the Kingdom of Women there? 实际上，它这个就是从东尼国描写的，它这个地形呢，也很像南巴的这个地形。东尼国的核心应该是在呃金川丹巴一带。现在四川丹巴这个以碉楼。为这个一种特征的一个文化区域。丹巴 County in Sichuan Province is a small place covering only 5,649 square kilometers, yet it has been closely connected with the mysterious Kingdom of Women. Although the kingdom has been lost for thousands of years. People today search for any traces of its existence. A 
a story from Dan Ba adds to the allure of this mysterious land. Dan Ba proved very transformative for the US-based Chinese artist Cao Yong. In 1983, soon after his graduation, Cao came to Tibet. Amazed at the cave frescoes of the Gu Ge Kingdom, he spent seven years there living a solitary existence, copying and drawing inspiration from the frescoes. Thanks to seven years of solitude, Cao Yong's artistic style is imbued with a transcendental verb. His life has been like a leaf floating in the wind. Fangzi你可以买，但是不等于你就拥有家。女人你可以找，不等于你就拥有一个家。真正是我觉得还是得有你真正心里面能感受到的一种爱情。没有的这些东西，还是飘的。in 2004, artistically stifled, Southwest China again, looking for new inspiration. Dan Ba was originally a brief stop on his itinerary, but something occurred there that changed his life forever. Dan village of Dunbar County, a serene village that went at its own pace, out of step with the world around it. Hidden between the Ka Pama Peaks and the Da Jin River, the village is home to many Gaiarong Tibetans. Their fairy tale-like houses conjure the image of the mysterious kingdom of women in the Tang Dynasty. But to Cao Yong, it is also a place of unexpected romance. Chan For Cao, the feeling of deja vu was unique, which led him to changing his plans and spending half a day with this girl who was named Vam. Chanho. <音> Chang 
当时没有想到他的回答也让我很吃惊，他说是的。Zhao Yong was deeply touched by Danbar County and this outspoken girl after only such a brief encounter. Just in the meeting of her with Sala, I think we were very close, and we never had to leave the relationship with her. 你说是情感也好，这种心境也好。What were the qualities in Vam that impressed and intrigued Sal so much? Was it her beautiful face, graceful dancing, and sweet singing? 我觉得他在他的身上，我能感受到一个人之间的这种真诚，我能感觉到这种咱们久违的一种朴实。我就不敢相信还有这么漂亮的地方，有意思，你这太可爱了，你这可爱到我就觉得走不了的地步。以后就到时候我就变成你这个袋子安音扎寨了。But due to his travel plans, Sal had to leave, but his heart remained. What would happen after his brief encounter with Van? Sal was amazed that there were so many beautiful girls in Danbar. A place that had been dubbed Bell Valley. The earliest records about Danbar County date back to the Qin and Han dynasties, some 2,000 years ago. At that time, it was the territory of the Xichang tribes. Similarly, the Eastern Women Kingdom is part of the Xichang tribe lineage. That's according to the Old Book of Tongue. This might have explained the geographical and genealogical connections between Dunbar and the legendary kingdom of women. It's possible that genes from the ancient kingdom can be found in the women who reside in this region. Most people living in Danbar regard themselves as the descendants of the Kingdom of Women. That's why Danbar was dubbed the Bell Valley. To them, the rulers of the kingdom must have been really beautiful women. For many years, in a sort of tradition, beauty pageants have been held to select the country's most beautiful girls, who are awarded the title of Golden Flower or Silver Flower. Wan's relative, Liu Ying, was crowned the Silver Flower of 2010. Now she studies at a university in Chengdu and only comes back during vacations. Liu Ying's mother, Liu Amu, was also known for her beauty and was selected as Kambar Flower in 2000. Beauty seems to be a rather common feature of Wan's extended family. In 1987, archaeologists unearthed near Dambar County a traditional burial method known as sarcophagus burial. This is common among some southwestern ethnic minorities. A large number of human bones were unearthed. Analysis of these thousand-year-old bones revealed a surprising finding that the average height of men here already reached 180, with women not far behind at 170 centimeters. In such a remote canyon in the Hongduan Mountains, what is the magic that has endowed the women here with such outstanding qualities?
geographically speaking, the major and minor Jinchuan rivers converge here to form the Dadu River. Many ethnic groups migrated and settled along the river, making Dunbar a center of ethnic fusion. It is probably due to this mix of ethnicities that led to certain genetic advantages, hence the title of Bell Valley. Perhaps it was the qualities inherited from her ancestors that made one so attractive to Cao Yong at the first sight. Is she a descendant of the Kingdom of Women? What's waiting for Tsao and Ram, two people living thousands of miles away from one another, after such a short, though sweet encounter? Tsao went back to the US one week after he left Danbar. The intense work there should have tempered his emotions, but the truth was that he ended up missing her even more. He then came to an astonishing decision. This is Cao Yong and his family in 2011. Cao, his wife Wang and their two lovely daughters. Now he is reaping happiness from their exceptional romance. After spending 20 years overseas, Cao eventually came back home and opened his gallery in China. Everything began with the Danbar, the alleged center of the kingdom of women, Gundam Ram, the beautiful girl from Danbar. I think the world is still a great deal for me. I want to see it, 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 I want to see it. 实实在在挡不住，但是有这个家，会让你心里面的非常非常的感觉到一种幸福的稳定。Today, one of Sal's jokes in 2004 is becoming reality. He said he would come and live here in the Kingdom of Women. Now this new house is almost done and will soon become one of Sal's painting studios. This is the charm of Dunbar and its women. Just like the Lost Kingdom of Women, Dunbar has been a magnet for many. However, does the inherited beauty among Dunbar women support the hypothesis that Dunbar used to be part of the ancient kingdom? Based on the kingdom's sphere of influence, it can be inferred that Danbar County may be the center of the kingdom. A 15-character account about it in the Old Book of Tongue only added to its mystery. According to historical descriptions, the queen's residence was located in a place called Kang Yan Chuan, a river named Wu Shui traverse the area on a southerly course. Where are Kang Yan Chuan and the river named Wu Shui? Kang 
The Dardu River was called Bo Shui in the Tang Dynasty, and it does flow south from this point on. Geographically, it coincides with the account in the Old Book of Tang. However, throughout all written records, Danba has never been called Kung Yan Chuan. This withstanding, some scholars insist that it should be considered the center of the kingdom of women. So, what are their reasons? This place is surrounded by the history of the documents. From its geographical position to its ceremonies. In Danbar, most young people like Ram find their partners in a traditional way, which is locally known as the custom of the kingdom of women. After the harvest, it is time for young people to date. Girls would get together, sharing stories around the hearth. Waiting for the boys to arrive at the same time, the boys gather and come to join the girls with a sense of joy and eagerness. Of looking for their significant other begins in a very special way. The boys can only sit in the corridor with their heads covered. They are supposed to sing songs to attract the attention of the girls. The girls would listen to the songs and choose based on the one that appealed to them. Upon request, then round the hearth, they will dance together to showcase their dancing technique and spirit. At the end of the dance, a boy can extend an invitation to the girl that he wants to date. The female is in control during the entire process. It is said that such ways of courtship were once part of the marriage practice in the kingdom of women. However, no such historical records can confirm this, and is now just seen as a beautiful remembrance of times gone by. Really connect Danbar with the Kingdom of Women are these special structures called Diao Lo Towers, scattered throughout the valley. They were used as watchtowers or blockhouses in ancient times. With a total of 343 ancient Diao Lo Towers, Danbar is also known as the Kingdom of a Thousand Towers. Owners of these towers are mainly Tibetans. Today, only a very few families still own their own Diao Lo towers. To them, the tower represents a family history. The Wangdu family is very proud of their Diao Lo tower. It's the oldest one of its kind in the neighborhood. In order to better preserve the tower, they moved away from here ten years ago. History and stories related to the tower have been passed down for generations in their local language.古代的话，好像几乎每家都有一座碉楼，每座古碉旁边也有这样一个小楼是连在一起。有碉楼就是一个完整的碉楼。Besides Danbar County, such towers can also be found in the Dardu River Valley, in the upper reaches of the Minjiang River. They are scattered in an area that coincides with the sphere of influence of the Kingdom of Women, which was mentioned in the old book. 
of tongue. Is this mere coincidence or a confirmation of the facts? The old Book of Tongue seems to have provided some clues. There they live in storied houses. The residence of the Queen is of nine stories, while those of civilians are six stories. So are these storied houses the Diao Lo Towers that we see today? But who were the builders of the towers? Were they citizens of the Kingdom of Women? Is there reliable evidence to connect the two structures as being the same thing? In order to find out the answer, people needed to first determine a date when the towers were built to see if they were built during the time of the kingdom. This is an abandoned tower in Zhonglu Township. Archaeologists found a large number of butyl mules inside it. These mules, painted with a subtleness, seem to recount stories from a distant past. Are these stories about the kingdom of women? Carbon dating shows that they were only made in the Ming Dynasty. This Diaolo Tower is the oldest known building in Danba County. Others were mostly built during the Ming and Qing dynasties. In other words, the Danba Towers we see today came into existence several centuries later than the period of the Kingdom of Women. So can we conclude the Diaolo Tower is not the so-called story building? A line from Book of the Later Han seems to have answered this question. Therefore, history of the Diaolo Tower began in the Eastern Han Dynasty. That's between 25 AD and 220 AD. And lasted until the Qing Dynasty. 1616 AD to 1911 in this region. Those towers built during the period of the Kingdom of Women may have just disintegrated over time. Historical records provide a vague picture of the Kingdom of Women, where the women hold all the positions of power and men are only meant for military service and labor. Because most of the records that detail its existence appeared during the Sui and Tang dynasties, people infer that the kingdom may have enjoyed great prosperity during that period. At that time, the rest of China had already entered an era of male domination and female subordination. The existence of such a matriarchal kingdom must have been under threat by surrounding patriarchal powers that it was situated in a land of barbarians. Did such a kingdom rely on to survive a world full of tribal conflicts governed by the law of the jungle? Could 
the Diaolo Towers have been of any help. 最早可能应该是一种和信仰和祭祀有关的一个建筑，但是后来这个建筑，因为它确实有是一个比较防好的防御的那么一个一个体。Today we can still find openings on all sides of the Diallo Towers that allow for a bird's eye view of the surroundings. This meant. That they were used for defence. In an area of simple weaponry, the Diallo Tower may have served as an impregnable military defence. In case of invasion, people could enter the tower and fire on the attackers through the openings. Annihilating the enemies who had to inch their way forward over the surrounding narrow paths. Probably thanks to such difficult geographical terrain and the fortress like Diallo Towers, the Kingdom of Women managed to protect itself from outside invasions. Such conjecture has its basis in history. It's supported by the accounts of the famous Jinchuan battles during the Qing Dynasty. Between 1747 and 1776, Emperor Qianlong waged two battles to quell the rebellion by the Jinchuan chieftains. Much to his surprise, the elite troops he sent paid a heavy price for victory. This painting, held by the Palace Museum, is a depiction of the fierce Jinchuan battles. In the first battle, the Qing court sent 75,000 troops, expecting an easy win over the rebels. The imperial troops suffered heavy losses, with both its commander and major general killed in battle. After the defeat, the emperor sent over 200,000 elite troops, along with artillery. After six years, the revolt was eventually quelled, but 25,000 Qing soldiers had been killed. What was able to inflict such heavy casualties on the Qing army? The Diaolo Towers are easy to defend and hard to attack. As historical records state, a tower guarded by but a dozen people can stop 10,000 troops from getting through, making such a fortress almost impenetrable. 防卫。是一个很主要的生存的一个一个一个一个一个,一个条件，因此在在丹巴这个地区，甚至在整个这个女国地区，它也建很多碉楼。The tallest Diallo Tower in Dunbar County today is nearly 60 meters. It is said that in its heyday, almost every family owned a tower. How could a family undertake such a huge construction project? In the villages of Danbar County, there is an old tradition. If a family is going to build a new house, every other family in the village will send people to help out. After a hard day's work, host family will treat the volunteers with homemade liquor and a simple dinner. Made it possible for each family to own their respective Diallo Tower. The D 
Diaolo Towers are not only tough fortresses, they are also works of architectural art. Apart from the generic tetragonal ones, there are pentagonal towers, octagonal towers, and even very rare tridecagonal towers. The more corners they have will add to the complexity of the construction that is required. The number of corners also symbolizes the wealth and power of the owner. Jose the Gaiarong Tibetans here pass down their history through a folkloric tradition. These are the ruins of a Diaolo Tower in Suopo village, Dunbar County. There is a legend about the tower in which women play a vital role. According to legend, this area belongs to chieftain Ling Ling Jiabu during the Ming Dynasty. Thanks to years of favorable weather and his good governance, the chieftain's fortune and fame grew to an unprecedented level. Every day he racked his brain trying to come up with a way to commemorate his power and wealth so that the future generations would remember his name forever. One day, he got the bright idea to build a tridecagonal Diaolo tower which no one had ever owned, as 13 is regarded as the most auspicious number in his tribe. The chieftain sent his men to look for master craftsmen to begin construction. To his great disappointment, none of those prominent craftsmen he found knew how to build a tridecagonal tower. Chieftain was infuriated and frustrated. The helpless chieftain could only resort to the gods for help, in the hopes that they could help him realize his dream. Perhaps the gods were moved by his determination, and all of a sudden, young lady in the village turned up, claiming that she could build a tridecagonal tower. is named Yung Drong Ram, which means auspicious fairy. She's known for her extraordinary intelligence among the villagers. However, she has never built a tower before. Is it possible for her to design a tower that no one has ever built? Eventually, with help of the gods, she finished the design with Wurya. two concentric circles. Then she divides the two circles into 13 equal segments with wooden poles, each division point marked with an erected pole. Lastly, she passed the wool yarn between the 26 intersection points to sketch out the 13 external angles and the 13 internal angles. Thus, a master plan for the tower was readied. With 
this blueprint, the artisans completed the miraculous tridecagonal tower in only a few months. An obscure Danbar woman eventually solved this challenge, which stumped all the other craftsmen. Some attribute this to her superior wisdom as witnessed in the Kingdom of Women. Such a wisdom which helped the women here rule the kingdom for centuries. invented the Diaolo Tower. Why are the towers only found in the Minjung River Valley and the upper reaches of the Dadu Rivers? Can archaeological research shed some light on who came up with the concept of the towers? In 1987, archaeologists found a unique burial method, sarcophagus burial, in Zhonglu Township in Danbar County. The dead are placed in slate coffins, inhumation burial. Most of the sarcophaguses in Sichuan province are found in the upper reaches of the Minjung River, the Qingyi River Valley and Gunzi Prefecture. Such distribution of a sarcophaguses coincides with the distribution of the Diaolo Tower. Is there a relationship between the two? Research about the sarcophagus burial shows that starting from the late Neolithic period, people here had been adept at stone building. The technique of building a sarcophagus is quite similar to that of building a Diaolo Tower. Were the people of this period also the inventors of the Diaolo Tower? An archaeological discovery in 1988 gave a positive answer to this question. The ruins of a prehistoric human habitation were excavated in Zhonglu Township. A new form of stone building was discovered here. It is an intermediate architectural form between that of the sarcophagus and the Diallo Tower. This ancient building is very small. The size of the Diallo and the Diallo and the Diallo are the same. So the age of the time is the same. 根据地层上来看，都是在这个公这个呃五千年以前，所以说我认为这个是碉楼的前身。Based on the discoveries of the sarcophagus burial and the Zhonglu ruins, people formulated a hypothesis that at least 5,000 years ago there were people inhabiting this area. They gradually learned to build houses and tombs with rocks that can be found everywhere in the surrounding mountains. With the passage of time, their stone construction techniques became more advanced, eventually giving rise to the well-developed local architectural form of the Diallo Tower. that the Kingdom of Women managed to survive amidst a patriarchal world. The towers standing in the valleys for thousands of years have witnessed the vicissitudes of people living in this land. In comparison, the legendary Kingdom of Women is but a blink of the eye in terms of human history. Are the ancient ruins on the 3,000-meter cliff the remains of the Kingdom of Women? 
how did its queen rule over much stronger men? What worked daily life as well as family life like in such a kingdom? Please stay tuned to continue exploring the mystery of the kingdom of women.